Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be the red pill and manosphere. And who better to discuss this topic than Mr. El Presidente, Anthony Dream Johnson. Welcome, man. Good to be here, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming over. Yeah, appreciate it. So what for the people that don't know, what is you know what's interesting is I, I think we were talking earlier hmm. before we started rolling is I and I started seeing I don't know, eight, six, eight, nine years ago on my YouTube channel and my people you know, commenting on my blog about the red pill, stuff about the manosphere. Hmm. And so for those that, that don't know, why don't you give us a little Yeah. What what is the manosphere? What's the red pill? Sure. So like we were talking about earlier, and I mentioned uh, the Manosphere, in my view of it, my understanding of it as president now, right, it has four main sub-communities. So it's not, just some, it's not just a cohesive movement where everyone gets along and they're all, you know, I joke that my followers on 21 Studios, the subscribers, are Manosphereans, you know, the magical land of Manosphere. <laughs> Manosphereans. Yeah. Uh, my fellow Manosphereans. But more literally, and I've, I've talked about this with reporters and stuff that, you know, like the New York Times and all that that asked me. The Manosphere has four distinct sub-communities, and then beyond that, it has kind of what I call Manosphere Light, and that's guys like Jordan Peterson, Stefan Molyneux, and yourself that make, even if you don't identify as being part of the Manosphere, you're a, you know, you're a man, you're a content creator, you're a leader, and you're creating positive content and media for men. That's what you do constantly. Instagram, YouTube, your, uh, your newsletter, your website. And women. And women. About 10% yeah. of my audience is women. Yeah. We have about 5%. Don't forget the ladies. Channel. Ours should be increasing soon, right? <laughs> Absolutely, um, but you're you're basically a you know you're a controversial content creator and you have a huge following and you want to help men and women too, and you do that through education, through educational media, newsletters, videos, you know all that stuff. So and, that, and Jordan Peterson does that too, even though he's not you know officially part of the Manosphere. Stefan Molyneux as well, he creates content for it from time to time, and then but then he focuses elsewhere on politics and philosophy, you know, philosophy or even current events like coronavirus stuff like that. Uh, but within the larger manosphere, more the formal manosphere, we'll call it, you have four communities. Some of those are pretty well known. Uh, obviously, the pickup artist community, the seduction community, as it was called, you have kind of the remnants of that. That's kind of fallen apart over the years, but there's still like a you know PUA thing, a seduction thing. For example, on Reddit, there's a seduction community that's been around for a long time, and they have 300, 400,000 followers. Obviously, back in the day, you had in the 2000s the pickup artist show, you had you know the game and all that. The seduction community has been around since the 90s, and that, to me, is a distinct part of the manosphere. You also have the men's rights movement, men's, right, men's rights activists. They're the more politically, legally uh, active part of, uh, activist part of the manosphere. You don't see that in the pickup artists. You don't see that even in the MGTOW guys. You don't see that even in the Red Pill. Those are the guys who focus on that. Whether you like them or not, that's what they do. <clears throat> you also see the Red Pill community, which is probably the smallest part of the manosphere. Before they got quarantined on Reddit um, about a year and a half ago now, they had about 300,000 subscribers on their network. And you see different leaders in that, different, you know, different uh, content creators. But the Red Pill is its own distinct uh, corner, distinct community within the larger manosphere. They usually don't even get recognized, but they are. And a lot of people say, and I agree with them, that they basically hived off from the pickup artist community in about 2011, 2012. Before that, the pickup artist community was kind of one thing. And then supposedly what happened was the pickup artist community was getting a lot more feminized as feminism was kind of increasing as an even more culturally dominant force. You saw a lot more pickup artist stuff get a lot more uh, apologetic about masculinity and things like that. And so there was a kind of a wing of the manosphere, the pickup artist community, that was not okay with that. So eventually they hived off and created their own community, and that eventually grew to have 300,000 followers. At this point, nobody knows how big it is because it just shows zero on Reddit because they, they nixed that when they quarantine a community. The final fourth community of the Manosphere that uh, occupies it is MGTOW. Uh, you know, a lot of people like we're talking about, you know, they get blasted by the MGTOW people the minute they make any critical comment. Um, they're, they are kind of, uh, <clears throat> there is a MGTOW um, community on Reddit that's pretty big. Yeah, they're... My experience, like we were talking earlier, is yeah. they're not the most positive people. They're not the <laughs> yeah. ones like, hey, it's going to work out for you, buddy. Yep. They're, not they're, surprised at all. Um, we, I've gotten some of the same flack from them. Uh, usually not lately, but sometimes I'm I do. I'm sure that comment alone will get a bunch of yep. people yep. bitching. But that's they're, they're, okay. They're another community, though. They have a couple hundred thousand uh, on Reddit and then on YouTube, different channels like Sandman and stuff like that. And they're just a, they're another component of the Manosphere. 
they're a distinct group separate from the Red Pill guys, separate from the men's rights, separate from the pickup artists. Uh, they don't even like the hate pickup artists, for example, a lot of the time. And they'll, they'll make fun of anybody, you know, for any reason that they want. They'll call, you know, uh, men's rights or manginas, you know, they call them pickup artists, manginas, you know, all this stuff. Um, we don't need to get into, I think, exact detail of each one of these communities, but those are the four. You have the pickup artists, you have the men's rights, you have the MGTOW, you have the Red Pill guys. And each one is a couple hundred thousand uh, distinct members in it. And there's some crossing, you know, crossover between them, but each one is pretty distinct. The MGTOW are probably, the, you know, one of the most distinct because they don't get along with anybody. <laughs> I told that to the New York Times because they, they asked me if MGTOW is the same thing as incel, and I was like, no, hell no. Uh, that's its own distinct thing that uh, is not part of the manosphere. They're, they hate everybody, obviously. But the MGTOW guys just tend to be more combative, and they don't get along with uh, other, other communities, but it is what it is. That's part of being a man sometimes. There's, you know, kind of combat and conflict. So, on the red pill, though, you asked about the red pill as well. So it's not just a community. The red pill obviously comes from the Matrix, uh, you know, in the late 90s movie. Red pill, blue pill. And the red pill, like, that's why I think they called it that from, as hiving off from the pickup artist community. The pickup artist community was never creating, in my opinion, a framework or a theory that underlied or underlined uh, why women act the way they do, why men act the way they do, and all that. The red pill was like a response to the increasing feminization you saw uh, of the pickup artist community, and it's a focus on truth. It's a focus on building a theory that actually, in today's culture, where men are not even supposed to know this, right? It's not just these guys, when they find your book and they look for advice, to advice from you and they hit rock bottom on something, it's not just that they don't understand women, it's that they're operating in a culture that has deliberately propagandized them to not understand women and to get themselves into toxic relationships and get divorce raped and all these things. They're living, they're living in the 1950s in terms of behavior, but they live in 2010 you know, or 2020 now. And having that kind of behavior and saying, oh, you know, we'll be, you know, she'll love me, she'll love me forever because we're married. She'll have unconditional love and all that. It's like, uh, that doesn't work anymore. And not understanding that she'll as a man. She'll leave your ass and take half your shit. Or more, yeah. Especially and, if you live in California. <sighs> yeah, lifetime alimony in California. As Stefan Molyneux said, not not overly strong and independent when they get lifetime alimony. And, you know, if you leave, uh, I'm not really a historian on this stuff, but even alimony, for example, yeah, it's just ridiculous. The origin of it, um, you know, was fitting to a time when that made sense, and now it's like, you're a strong and independent woman. You can go get a job all on your own. You don't need alimony. What do you need that for? I think it should be abolished, speaking of it. Anyway, the Red Pill community, with regards to uh, the Manosphere, and with regards to its hiving off from the pickup artist community, it's a much more explicit focus on building a theory and a framework for understanding women and a culture that deliberately and explicitly does not want men to understand the truth. It wants them to be these kind of dumb buffoon betas that, it, that they even show you on TV, right? Mm -hmm. Homer Simpson to Modern <clears throat> Family. And the red pill is a pushback against that. To teach men the truth even when it's cold and uncomfortable and it's forbidden from you to even know, you know? Having the, let me, even on your channel, the, the red pillars, by the way, they call you purple pill. Yeah, they call me, um, Corey, he's purple pill, he's blue pill. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I think somebody called me an orange pill when I was like, <laughs> I don't they've even got know. so many fucking colors. It's like, you that's can take all one. those pills and stick them up your ass, dude. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't fit in nobody's box. So that, that's a way for them to insult you just because you, you have a positive view of relationships. Uh, that's all a bunch of nonsense from them, you know, when they attack you like that. Um, but I do, I do think that you are, you know, whether you identify as or not, it doesn't really matter. You're focused on the truth. You're focused on facts. You're focused on what works. Yeah. To me, that makes you red pill, as long as that's genuine. What I always say to people, because a lot of people see me like, who's this fucking shave tech? What the hell is he going to teach me? I was like, even if you think I'm full of shit, if you apply the things I teach, they will work. it will work mm -hmm. for you. I promise you. Yeah. That's a test. Apply it to your life and see what happens. Look at it, you know? So, yeah, they call you purple pill. It's a bunch of bullshit nonsense. It's just an insult. What is the purple pill supposed to represent? And in terms of the Matrix movie, where the analogy came from, it would be like Cypher. Uh, someone who you know woke up to woke up from the blue pill, but then he wanted to kind of go back to that comfort cocoon kind of thing, and so he made a deal with the you know the the, the machines Agent or whatever. Agent Smith was it? Agent Smith, yeah. yeah. So purple pill is like the mixture of the two. Um, it does have real meaning, but they're misapplying it to content creators that they don't agree with, like you. That's a bunch of nonsense. A real purple pill guy would be probably like me before finding uh, you know the red pill community and stuff in 2016. So, for example, I understood from the pickup artist community, my experience there building the convention that I do and things like that, I understood how to pick up women. 
I knew, and so this is, but I didn't, I was still so young, I didn't really get the bigger picture, and that's the point. I understood approaching women, I understood how to pick them up, how to have the same lay and all that stuff, but I didn't really understand women, I understood pickup. I understood some mechanics that could get me laid, which was, I'm a young man, that's pretty fun. That's what I want, that's part of what I wanted to do. But I did not understand women more fundamentally. I didn't understand women in the context of relationship. I didn't understand even parts of myself as a man. So in those ways, I was still kind of blue pill. So you saw me have these kind of red pill ideas. Like I can go to a bar, I can approach a woman, I can get better at doing that over time, and then I can bring a hot girl home the same night and have sex with her. Which most guys, you know, the average lifetime partner count for a man in America is like seven. Or like, that's like the median, I think, according to the CDC. So the idea that you can go out to a bar and deliberately pick up a girl and bring her home and have sex, to most guys, this is like, you know, movie stuff. This doesn't happen. But the pickup artists teach you that this is possible, that you can learn these things and you can apply them to your life and you can go out and learn how to do that. So that is kind of a red pill understanding of women that you can do that, but then not having the backbone and the foundation to be masculine, to be a man, and to truly understand women at a, at a broader and deeper level, that's purple pill. And that's dangerous because you can get sucked into a toxic relationships like that, which happened to me, which we'll probably talk about pretty soon. Yeah. And it's very common for that to happen, too. Yeah, Guys. you got to pre-qualify your prospects, I like to say, <coughs> borrowing a term yeah. from the mortgage business. Yep. Because, you know, just because she's hot and got a great body doesn't mean she's a good teammate. But the pickup artist community, if you notice, I don't know how familiar you are with it, but in the 2000s, when I grew up in the pickup artist community, I found it in 2005. I was very young. I was 17. They didn't talk about that. They talked very little about relationships, and certainly nothing that was focused on fundamentals. It was very, like, logistics and approaching and outer game, as they call it, focused. It was only later on, in about 2009, 2010, that they even took seriously the concept of inner game, of understanding self-confidence and your self-worth and self-esteem and things like that. Things that I think you're much more in tune with than they were in the 2000s which again was much more topical and yeah I coach game. all kinds I mean I I coach a yeah. lot of guys that are married very religious no yeah. sex till marriage I coach yeah. guys that have been married for 30 years and have been have been getting laid <laughs> the last 10 years oh, I coach a lot of lesbians I wow. coach gay guys sometimes I mean I I you know, I look at the yeah. world as it we're all a bunch of spiritual beings having a human experience I believe in mm. reincarnation it's like however mm. badly you fuck somebody over in one life you're going to be the person getting fucked over in the next. That's the way I look at it. So I, I, you know, I have a different perspective on things, and it's like, you know, as a coach, my job is to help people achieve their outcomes. I'm not here to be their judge or yeah. be their priest. It's like, what do you want to do? What's your outcome? Which is always the first thing I ask in my phone mm. sessions with people. It's like, when we hang up today, what do you want to get out of the phone session? Mm. And then I, you know, I work back from that because I want them to achieve it because people pay me a, a lot of money to to talk to me and I want to make sure that you know they achieve their outcome yeah. otherwise I failed yeah you're a coach not a dictator <clears throat> yeah, exactly it's, it's similar to the 22 call and they think that we you know I was talking about earlier that we want to control women and dictate to them it's like no I want you to like you want to come to the conference let's talk like how can I help you how can our speakers help you more importantly and yeah it's it's a very mutual uh, you know voluntary thing that's yeah, good cool so back to the um, the manosphere. What? Yeah. So is, has has the manosphere has it been kind of? I mean, where what is the state of it? The stat state <laughs> of the, the union. State take? of the manosphere. It's the state of the manosphere for the manospherians. <sighs> yeah, I would say recently it's grown a lot. I think that make women great again. Basically, make women great again has been such a huge uh, cultural thing. It's reached almost a hundred million people that, that it's actually grown the manosphere. It's grown awareness of it. Which that's your seminar that's coming for up. Women. With you have, it's a, kind of like a couples weekend, right? You're yeah. going to have the patriarch edition yep. and then the one for the women. So couples yep. can go yep. together this fan. The men can attend the patriarch edition and the women can attend the That's right. Make Women Great Again, and which the future, is the we mansplaining do... event of the future. Or it's the, the, mansplaining, the mansplaining event of the century. Yeah, it's because it's all male speakers, 100%, for the first year. In the future, we might change it, but for now, it's the mansplaining event of the century, all male speakers and all female attendees. Men are not allowed to attend 22Con. Women are not allowed to attend 21 Convention. But all men are speaking at both conferences. So this has really upset the feminists, you know, for obvious reasons. In the future, How dare though, you help men and women? I know, right? Yeah, I know. How, how you bigot. How dare you? Yeah, it's just nuts. But it's, it was expected to, though, like the outrage and all that. We live in cancel culture kind of times. People have been trying, threatening to kill me, all kinds of nasty stuff. They've screaming at me on the Internet. 
the company voicemail that we have, the, the phone's been blowing up with these women screaming at me and stuff, saying they want me to die, they want me to, I mean, all kinds of really nasty stuff. They wish I was never born, I should have been aborted. I mean, just, just sick stuff, man. They're trying to find the venue, too, obviously, to cancel it. Uh, even they try to trick us through email. They try to like get the venue without buying the ticket, and uh, it's so obvious what they do. It's like I know I know you just want to get the venue, so you can call them and, and harass management, tell them to cancel us. A bunch of nonsense. People with too much time in their hands. That's right. But the manosphere, I think, is a very. So let me say this about the manosphere. In spite of some of the negativity you see, which I think is natural to any movement, the manosphere I think is uh, primarily and fundamentally very positive for men and women. And for women, that's now being, for the first time, that's really been, that's being expressed and that's being seen. And that's through mansplaining, which is a term that I think feminists, no, it's funny. It was, you know, people laugh at it right away, but it's funny because... Well, they use it as a derogatory term <laughs> towards men, and then you've yeah. just kind of taken it like a keto and just redirected the momentum. And, that's right, that's right. Into something positive. Just like Trump would do with these people that attack him. Or like what happened in the MAGA movement. They called the... Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters deplorables. Mm -hmm. Everyone would say, yeah, fuck yeah, I'm a deplorable. So it's, it's a positive way to deal with, uh, you know, a kind of negative concept like that. Mansplaining in particular, I think, has been used to silence and censor and neuter masculine voices in America from fathers to brothers to men to husbands uh, and all that stuff. And that's one of the reasons it was so important to grab as a concept. Because I knew they'd call this a mansplaining event anyway. So I was like, all right, let me just take this concept, mansplaining, which is what we're doing anyway in, in their terms, right? We're talking to women about how to be women. And we'll embrace it and own it. And that's by saying it's the mansplaining event of the century. The biggest one, the first one, all that stuff ever. Anyway, the manosphere is a very pot. So feminism, I view as a movement for women, obviously, right? And an ideology that I think is very toxic. But feminism is very negative for women, completely, especially at this point. And so there's no, for example, in, in feminism, whether it's on Reddit and these huge communities or websites and all these different organizations they have, none of it is self-improvement focused, like none of it. At best, maybe some fitness stuff they go over, like, you know, lose weight and all this stuff. But really, it's a very negative movement that's not positive. And the manosphere is very different from that. From day one, the manosphere has been a lot more positive. It's been about even the pickup artists. You know, people, our conference, for example, when I started it in 2006, 2007, they said it was like a pickup artist conference. And I, as the founder, I never viewed it as that, ever. Even at the beginning when it was almost all pickup artists speaking and like one fitness guy. Um, first of all, we had a fitness component from the beginning. But second of all, even with the pickup artists, coaches and all that stuff, and eventually we, you know, evolved beyond that too. For me, it was like your stuff. It was about understanding. You say understanding relationships. That's your website. But for me, the yeah, conference... Because life is relationships. It's all about our relationships with other human beings. Yeah. But even from our perspective, my perspective as the founder of the conference, it was about understanding women. And it was about understanding yourself as a young man. Because it was for young men at the beginning, the Under 21 convention. So it was always about understanding male-female relationships, understanding women, understanding yourself as a man understanding how women behave, so femininity, things like this. The pickup artist component, that was like kind of just a framework that it existed in, like a topical uh, shell to it. But at its core, it was always fundamentals based, understanding things, understanding philosophy, understanding women, understanding yourself. And that's why I think it's also grown so much over the years. For I'm doing it for 13, almost 14 years now. And it's evolved to have, you know, medical doctors, Navy SEALs, uh, a lot of coaches like yourself, uh, you know, that we have similar and then even, uh, you know, philosophers like Stefan Molyneux. All that's welcome at the conference because it's always been understanding focused. Not like get laid, which, you know, that's fine. But it's a much deeper, bigger vision than that. Uh, state of the manosphere, though, I could get back into that. But I think it's, yeah, so let me say that. I think it's a very positive movement for men. And now women, too. For the first time, men, for the first time in modern American history, I think, men are standing up and speaking in public to women. And we're using Make Women Great Again to do that in a whole conference. So that's a very positive thing. But even for the men, it's primarily, there's a little bit of negativity. You know, guys get burnt in a relationship. They look for help on the internet. They end up in a community, you know, whatever. You know, with something that's interesting, though, along <coughs> those lines is that yeah. when I first wrote my book, it's 95% <clears throat> of the self-help books on dating and relationships are bought by women, only about 5% wow. by men. Damn. So, you know, if you got a bunch of guys mm. that are experts, coaches, yeah. and, you know, the people you have speaking at, they yep. make women great again. I mean, that's something that, you know, women are more inclined to want to hear what they got to say because they're more focused on yep. nurturing and relationships because and, yep. that's all part of feminine energy. 
but as far as the manosphere, I mean, it's it's a lot of content. It's not just people in it, you know, men. It's a lot of uh, speakers like yourself and coaches and things like that. It's very positive. Uh, for fathers, for example, we do a whole fatherhood conference now, how to be the best father you can be for yourself and your wife and your children and all that. And for the men, it's very positive. It's how to be the best man you can be. That's like a recurring theme throughout all the manosphere. A lot of the coaches say that. They have different kind of variations of the, of the phrase for that, but really... Like the one I like to use is from a Ayn Rand objectivist perspective, uh, become the ideal man, not by someone else's definition, but by your own definition. And that to me means being the best man you can be in this lifetime that you have before you die. Whether that's next week or 50 years from now, like be the best you can be, express yourself in the best way possible, and navigate life and define what that's going to mean for you with your goals and values that you have and you pick along the way. But yeah, the manosphere is very positive, and that's also how it's so different from feminism. Feminism, I view, is a very negative movement for women, and it's very toxic and destructive. The manosphere is about building men up and building fathers up and becoming the best man that you can be. And each community has kind of a different focus, uh, whether it's the you know, red pill guys teaching men what they believe to be true about women in a culture that is very hostile to men and masculinity, or whether that's the men's rights community trying to undo uh, very destructive, unfair, unjust family law for men and fathers and things like that. For example, recently, I think in Kentucky, they finally got passed in law now, 50-50 uh, custody for men and women, fathers and mothers, as a default uh, after divorce, you know, child custody. In most states, you don't have that. Women win like 83% of custody battles or something like that for primary custody in America, which obviously is not equal and, and not fair and not good. No. Nope. And in Florida now, too, they're pushing that finally. I think the bill just got introduced recently to make 50-50 custody default which I think is uh, very American and very positive and very just. And so that's what the men's rights guys, that's their focus, different from the pickup artists and the, med, the red pill and stuff like that. So I think that answered your question for the state of the manosphere. Uh, I should give a speech on that, yeah, at some point. <laughs> it wouldn't be the first one, but uh, it would be, you know, one of the first. So anything else that uh, we should talk about about the red pill that people should know? Uh, I mean, the Red Pill is a distinct community in the Manosphere. Um, I'm not on good terms with one of the leaders in it. I exiled him from the Manosphere. That was my first act. Excommunicado. Excommunicado, exactly. John Wick style. <laughs> yeah. um, I, a lot of people are very critical of it, like the MGTOW, but I, th I still think it's a pretty positive thing. Um, in spite of some of the polarization in it and some of the negativity, I think it's still a pretty good thing. Men need to be told the truth about men and women. They need to be told the truth about what's going on today. And the Red Pill, I think, does that. It's a good analogy, too. It's used, obviously, outside of the Manosphere. It's used in politics and all kinds of things. Because it came from a movie that everyone knows. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it's a good movement. It's a good thing. I think you're very red pill. I mean, you're dressed head to toe in red right now. Yeah, I got this <laughs> nice new hat here that yeah. somebody just gave me. Um, I also, oh, the final thing let's say is that I don't know how much longer, and I've said this in a speech I'll publish pretty soon. I said it in our, my speech in Poland at the convention, 21 convention that I think long term you're going to see the sub-communities, the four of them, fizzle out in the Manosphere and it's going to kind of coalesce into one larger movement known as the Manosphere. That's part of why I wanted to be the president of it and declared that uh, to, for a couple of reasons, like being a lightning rod for mainstream media to attack. I think someone needed to, needed to do that who was uh, anti-fragile, who would benefit from that, as I have. You've I handled have. it quite well. You, Thanks. You know, I, I watched the <laughs> Piers Morgan interview yeah. and they, you know, they did a good job of trying to squeeze your nuts. Yeah. And, you handled it, Dude, that handled was it pretty at, well. Dude, that was at 3 in the morning, too, here in Orlando. I was, like, so exhausted. I had some coffee or whatever. I was still just like, uh, uh, it's like, all right. That's right. They're five hours ahead over there in London. Yeah. Yep. But anyway, anyway I think long-term, like the 2020s now, this decade, I don't think that the pickup artists have already been kind of falling apart over the years. Like, it's not as organized as it was in the 2000s. So I think we'll see these communities kind of fizzle out or lose momentum and in general, men will identify more strongly and consistently with the, the manosphere itself, which is kind of an odd term, you know, but it's the best we have. People say it sounds like a gay nightclub or something. I think it's stupid. <laughs> um, it is what it is. It's the manosphere. It's a community for men. It's the world's first, other, first ever movement for men and fathers that are organizing together for the interest of men, boys, and fathers. Mm -hmm. That's never been seen in the world, to my knowledge. And it's a positive thing, too, like the feminists claim their stuff is for which I think is false and fraud, basically. The manosphere that's real. These are men and fathers, you know, getting together, talking about the issues, putting out content, helping each other uh, navigate the world as men and as fathers. <clears throat> and that's needed right now, a positive movement and a positive force for men. And that's not happening anywhere else in the world. 
and I think it needs to happen, and we're at the forefront of making that happen, and it's a very good thing. Very happy to uh, lead it and be the lightning rod. Cool. And so how do people get in touch with you to attend your events or to yeah. uh, your YouTube channel? They can go to the21convention.org. That's the21convention.org. They can also visit us on, on YouTube. Go to youtube.com slash 21, or you can do a search for 21 Studios. You can also go to themanosphere.org, sign up for the, uh, the Manosphere email list. And then is there a separate domain for the yes. women's event? So for the women's event, if you're a woman watching this, or if you're a man and you have a wife or a girlfriend or a sister or something like that you want to send, uh, she can go to 22convention.com. That's 22convention.com. Tickets on sale now. And the event for women happens May 1st to May 3rd right here in Orlando, Florida. Cool. Well, thanks yeah. for coming over, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. And uh, as always, for if you, maybe this is the first video of mine that you're watching, both my books, How to Be a 3% Man and Mastering Yourself, you can read them totally for free. Even if you think I'm full of crap and I don't know what I'm talking about, if you apply the things that are in my books, they will work for you. And if you want to talk to me personally, one-on-one, -on -one, and do some coaching, you can go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page, and book a coaching session with yours truly. And until next time, President Dream. That's right, President Dream. <laughs> Coach Corey Wayne here. We'll talk to you soon.